Four new teams are now in the Big 12 Conference, and we are so excited about that. What a topsy-turvy roller coaster ride it's been for these past 24 months. But we can now say and welcome in to the Big 12 Conference the Houston Cougars, and we are so happy to have on and say hello to Chris Pesman, the athletic director for the Houston Cougars, joining us on Heartland College Sports. I'm Pete Mundo, and as always, however you're getting this show, YouTube, podcast, hit that subscribe button, and our radio affiliates, we always appreciate our radio affiliates checking out and being a part of this show. So, Chris, you guys are in the Big 12. Uh, this is a long time coming. How does it finally feel to be here? Yeah, surreal. You know, it's um, having worked here when the Southwest Conference dissolved and, you know, having been in different roles here at different times to know the journey we've been on to get to this point and to – Beyond the other side of it is just, it's amazing and could be more excited and frankly, more excited, most excited for our fans. Uh, this has meant so much to so many people that stuck with us for a long time. You know, we're out in the middle of the desert for a long time without any water and uh, being on the other side of it and a chance to, you know, metaphorically make it to the oasis is uh, is exciting. And I'm really happy for everybody and, and really excited to see what the city is going to be like this fall when we're playing uh Big 12 teams here in the city of Houston. So take me through. I mean, for people that don't know, of course, you are a captain, a letterman there for Houston football. So you've seen this over the last 35 years or so unfold. You mentioned the Southwest Conference. Did you ever feel like this day would come again for Houston where you're playing major college football based on how ugly that breakup was going back 25, 30 years now? Yeah, it felt pretty lean. I mean, there was a lot of times in there where we were just, you know, fake, you know, fake it till you make it and weren't really sure where this was going to end up. I think it really picked up steam, you know, with the stadium getting built uh, about 10 years ago, but also, you know, when the volatility hit around 2016, um, when the big 12 looked at expanding that point felt like it was a lot more real um, at some point And hopefully the not so distant future that it was going to play out for us. And we'd have this opportunity. And you go back to almost two years ago with, uh, Texas and OU making the decision at that point to go to the SEC. And that was, um, I remember that day because it, it felt like, okay, this is our chance. And if it hadn't happened at that point, it was like, I don't know when it will happen. And to think that we're sitting here today and we're in the Big 12 is just, I, I, I couldn't be more um, excited, relieved, um, but at the end of the day, excited for, for where, we're, where we are and where we're going. Now, take me through, I mean, two years ago, you know, we're sitting here, the the day happens, Texas and OU, it gets leaked that they're leaving. Um, Houston was under consideration, I want to say it was 17 or 18 when the Big 12 considered expanding. I don't know, I, I know you came in in 17, so you can probably have that timeline off the top of your head better than I do. When that process happened, we know that Houston was in the running, but of course the Big 12 decides not to expand. How much do you think that process helped you and, and helped Houston in general land that invite? You know, that's a great question. It's I wasn't here necessarily. Well, obviously I was in the role. I was at Cal when that all played out. Mm -hmm. But if anything, what it did is it, it, it solidified every, everybody's commitment from the board to the campus administration to, hey, we're really close. And you could also see that there were there was going to be movement at some point somewhere. And how do we best prepare ourselves for when that moment occurs? And, you know, there was a lot of hopes and wishes that went into that and, and it broke our way, but, you know, the university stepped up in a really meaningful way to support us financially, to allow us to get to this point. And with whether it was subsidizing our operating budget or allowing us to invest in capital, which, you know, we were well over $300 million in the last 10 years. And um, right after last football game of this season, we got another $140 million project that goes for the football operations center. So they've given us the ability to navigate on the prospect of, of a possibility. And mm -hmm. now that possibility has become reality. And it's, it's, it's really exciting because you can see what it means for our future. Um, financially is the thing that unfortunately I feel like I talk about a lot, but because the finances is the main driver for resources for us to be able to be able to reinvest in our programs. That's, that's why this whole thing matters so much. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we're, when I got here, our operating budget was about $50 million last year. We were about 75 ish, you know, okay. as we get ready to go in the big 12 would be about 96 million. 
And in three years, we'll be about 112 to win 15, which puts us on par with everybody else. And think about everything we've achieved from the basketball success, four sweet 16s in a row, Peach Bowl in 2016. You know, there's a lot of things we can point to, but we were doing that without the benefit of, you know, a P5 status and or an A5 status in this case. And so that's that's what's exciting because I know what we've done with limited resources, and now we've got a chance to be um, more evenly competing uh, with the resources and the things that we put in our programs. And I can't wait to see what we do. How do you, how would you, Chris, describe to Big 12 fans what'll be different with a school like Houston, where most Big 12 schools obviously are in college towns, whether it's the old Southwest uh, conference teams or anybody else, even the old Big 12 teams, or I guess the old new Big 12 teams, Ames, Iowa, Manhattan, Kansas. With Houston coming in, what does that look like as a pro town? And what are the benefits you think you'll see from being in a pro town? Because people talk about the cons, but I think there's benefits as well. Absolutely, there are. Um, we're, it plays out every day and, you know, specific to us, just like day to day. I mean, the opportunities that have presented themselves from like NIL, um, because you've got major companies that have come in and been active in that space with us, as opposed to maybe more donor centric in more areas that are college specific and don't have the infrastructure of, of or the, not the infrastructure, but the what I call the endowment of a city like Houston that helps support us. And that goes into that matrix of things that help advantage us as we make this transition. But for those that come in from, you know, Iowa State or Oklahoma State, uh, this is not the same place that we were competing in when we were in the Southwest Conference when it was Baylor and TCU and Tech. I mean, we were playing in the Astrodome and think about what that's like now. And yeah. now we've got a, a really cool campus on our stadium on campus. Uh, we play on campus. We weren't doing that before in the Southwest Conference. So when people come here, they're going to see we are an urban institution. There's that's who we are. But, you know, there's the access for travel, entertainment while you're here wrapped around the game is what drives us. But also the visibility now, because when you when you get seen in Houston, you compete at the highest level. You've got four and a half million people in town that are able to, that you're able to touch and, and participate in it. And that's what really gets this exciting because a lot of people from, you know, Southwest conference, SEC, big 12, whatever, they all live in this, in, in this area, we attract all types of alums. And so we were able to, you may be an Oklahoma state fan most of the year, but maybe there's one or two Saturdays a year where you can come support Houston because they're members of your conference and you're just helping pull for them. But, and that's in football and, you know, basketball, the product that's coming in with the strength of the league and basketball is, you know, it's the best league in, in the country uh, that that good luck getting into a basketball game at Petita Center uh, <laughs> when, when basketball starts. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, Chris, you know, you mentioned the population growth that Houston has seen the last 30 years. I mean, the amount of talent, high school talent that is right there in that backyard. This might be more of a question for Dana Holgerson, but, you know, football, obviously, uh, as well as you do. How much does the pipeline to that four and five star kid that maybe, you know, would go to LSU, would go to Texas? How much does that open up the door to at least Houston being in the mix for a player like that right in your backyard? It's 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 already happening and it has been happening since this, this announcements occurred. Um, you know, Dana's we're, we're getting high school kids that wouldn't, we just wouldn't have been in the mix for. And I get it. I mean, some kid, Hey, I want to play at the highest level. I understand it. We still love them up. And with the transfer portal now, you know, kids tend to move a lot more frequently, frequently. So we've been really strategic about maintaining relationships with kids that move on because there's no point in burning a bridge. If a kid choose, chose to go somewhere else, but now those kids are choosing to stay home. And, you know, I, I obviously can't talk about specific recruits with the recruiting rules, but we've had a lot of activity over the last couple of weeks where kids had other choices at the P5 level and they're st choosing to stay home and represent for the city because now they have that opportunity to compete at the highest level. And we've got great coaches that we put a lot of money into and the same thing with facilities. There's nothing they're missing by staying home. Mm -hmm. That's so true. Um, you know, you hired Dana Holgerson, of course, you brought him back. He's going into year five. I don't know if any of you predicted this happening uh, so quickly, but here he is back in the big 12. What have those conversations been like between you and Dana and, and Dana knowing this league and, you know, what it takes to win? He people should remember. I mean, he had some real success uh, those last couple of seasons there in Morgantown and, and now he's back in the league. Yeah, it, it, the conversations with Dana and Kelvin, because Kelvin was at Oklahoma, right? Yeah, they, They're pretty direct. They know what needs to happen. And 
look, I'm, I'm smart enough to listen to them. They've been there and they've done that. And so, you know, what I appreciate about both of them is they recognize that it's going to, there's a period of transition. Now, obviously basketball, the speed with which Kelvin built that program up to and where it is right now. I mean, we're, we're competing at the highest level. I mean, we're, we were a number one seed in the tournament last year. So we are legitimately competing for national championships. Obviously we want to get our football program there. I mean, to say that you're competing for national championships today, probably a little ambitious, but that's, that's what we're aiming towards. Why would we shoot for anything less? And, you know, but you talk about the transition in the league. It, it's interesting because operating budgets, personnel budgets, those are things that matter. But, you know, as you talk to Dana specifically about this trans, this transition, it's how he, he builds the roster. It's one thing to get up for one opponent for one game. You know, last year we played Tech in a non-conference. Uh, you know, we've had that history of playing a couple of those schools one time and, and having success against Oklahoma in 2016 at NRG Stadium. But now you're doing that week in, week out. So the depth that you have to have in your roster, you can't be one deep. You can't be 22 guys. you got to be 44 guys. And so that's where he's been very thoughtful. And what I appreciate about the way that he's attacked this process is how do I build a roster that can compete week in, week out, not just get up for that one game. And that's really specific one answer. And I could go into a lot of different ones, but I think that helps tell the story of, of the granularity of what we focus on. And is it, and you kind of alluded to it there, Chris, is it um, fair to say that the transition in basketball, not just because of the success, but, you know, just the pure amount of players, it, it's it's an easier transition for basketball than a football roster with dozens of kids where the two deep and the depth of the team matters? Yeah, I, you know, that's – Coach Coach Samson would tell you something else than I'd probably <laughs> say. So I got to uh, – you know, bas- we're just – it's interesting. You know, we've, we've had a chance to compete at a really, really high level. And look, I got here five and a half years ago and it, I, I showed up at a great time. And, you know, that was the first year coach really got this thing going, got in the tournament, won our first tournament game in over 30 plus years and, and been in the sweet 16 literally every year I've been here. I mean, I just, I'm like, I can't believe how fortunate I've been. Um, but you think about the transition into the new league, but you know, you got Kansas in there who, you know, is playing for a national championship. I mean, it, it, there's there's no off days. I mean, your worst team in the Big 12, their RPI was in the 60s. You know, I mean, it's like or, or close to it. I mean, yeah. that's it, – it's a street fight, man. You're getting into that thing, and it is – you better be buckled up because they're coming straight at you. So true. Chris Pesman, the Houston Athletic Director, is joining us. Of course, the Cougars now in the Big 12 Conference. Appreciate you being here, whether it's on the YouTube channel, the podcast, and of course, the radio show as well. So what about, Chris, as you look at the future, the NIL opportunities? I hadn't thought of what you brought up earlier, which is that you're, you know, you're in a town with major corporations. What does that mean for you guys, NIL-wise, um, and now building this brand, being in the Big 12 Conference. How important is that, and how critical will that be? It, it, well, look, retention of athletes for us has always been really at the forefront of NIL. It, we've Our coaches, our programs have done a really good job of identifying kids that compete here, that can compete here, win here, and be successful at the University of Houston. Naturally, you know, there's cherry-picking going on. We all know what's happening in the NIL transfer space with – you know, tampering is probably the right word where, where schools are getting access to these kids in a way that is not intended to happen. But what NIL has afforded us the opportunity to do because the companies that have been involved is hold those kid, hold on to those kids and keep them. By and large, you know, we had a kid leave in basketball this year. That was the first real kid that's left that was a starter getting minutes that you just kind of, it was hard to reconcile that for me personally. Um, we had the same issue with a with one football player in particular uh, that left, and um, we we're that kind of surprised us. At, you know, the running back. I think that's that's not a secret. I mean, we, that's out there. Um, the, that's the first time we kind of lost a kid that we thought would be here. But by and large, you know, Mattress Mac, who's one of the largest furniture retailers in the whole country, is a huge advocate for NIL around our basketball program. There's a local attorney that is not a university of Houston graduate. Neither of these people are that is, you know, an attorney that's been really supportive of our football program. You know, the original thought was that we would go out for small and medium sized businesses. And I'm not in the collective, so I can't say we, the, the thought of the collective was that they'd hit up the small to medium sized businesses, you know, five to $25,000 
budgets that could help support NIL. But what they quickly found was there's a real market that was six and seven figures out there that have helped us be competitive in the NIL space. Now, that market, NIL, is 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 it's very volatile right now. It's changing daily, and you got to stay on top of it because those resources get stretched out really fast. Um, but I feel like we've got a lot more better opportunity to sustain that over the long run than, you know, if it was donor funded specifically. What is the, the Houston, uh, for the big 12 fan that doesn't know Chris, the Houston fan base. I mean, I imagine they're obviously big there, but, uh, do they get up to Dallas, Fort Worth, Austin, uh, San Antonio, where, where, where are big 12 fans going to see hopefully a large contingency of Houston fans, whether it's on the road or just, you know, around various cities as that pride continues to increase. Well, I think first off, right in the state, I mean, look, I'm 53 years old. So I I remember the Southwest Conference. I grew up, I obviously played in it. But when I was in high school, that's those were the games I watched on Saturday morning. Our our fans in general, the opponents that make up the Big 12 are the are the teams that our fans grew up with. Right. Mm -hmm. And so getting in a car and driving to Baylor, getting up to Lubbock, going to Fort Worth, you know, going down to uh, Austin for a basketball game. That, that you're going to see us travel. Our fans are really excited. Now, the newer opponents, I never, been, I personally, I've never been to Iowa State. I have been to K-State. I can't wait to get there and, and watch us travel. We, we're working on travel packages now, uh, how we're going to travel with football for, for, the, for, the, for the fan, the fringe fan that maybe doesn't tr- have the opportunity to travel with the football team. But how do we work to get people to move with us? Because part of this is that camaraderie of being out on the road in a hostile environment where everybody gets in a car, they tailgate in the parking lot, they stay Friday night, go to the game. And then everybody is in a, is in a procession heading home after the game. That's what makes this so much fun. And that's what I appreciate about this opportunity for us because the regionality of this realignment for us is what makes so much sense. And we're seeing it um, the way our, our fans are buying tickets and how everybody is so excited for being able to go to away games in the fall. What about you? I mean, you mentioned, and we've talked about it, your ties to the Southwest Conference. Is there a school? I mean, when you think back to your playing days, was it Texas the obvious one, or was there another school that you always wanted to beat, you always had at the top of the list, and now that you're back in the conference, uh, you know, you'd love to see the Cougars take down? Yeah, um, there's one or two. I'll just leave it at that. And, um, yeah, and I've, I've got a long – well, it's not a long list, but there's a couple on there that are pretty personal for me. It, it, I was I was here. We were pretty good when I was here. We my, my first year we went nine and two. The second year we went nine and two. Then we were ten and one. I, then I was a junior and senior. Thought we were going to be really good, and we went four and seven and four and seven. So, uh-huh. um, but uh, you know, we beat everybody when I was in the league here, including Arkansas. While they were still here um, in the Southwest Conference before they went to the SEC. So I'll just leave it at there's a couple in there that mean a little bit more. And I don't think it's hard for anybody to pick out who that may or may not be. Fair enough. We can all draw our own conclusions on that. What about the new teams? You mentioned some of the schools and the places you haven't been before. Um, Is there one or two at the top of that list that you think of and you say, hey, I always wanted to get here to this town for this game. I mean, what kind of sticks out to you? Yeah, you know. I've heard a lot of really good things about Iowa State, their game day environment, and their stadium is, is I've heard is really cool. I want to see that set up. Um, I haven't been to BYU either. Uh, you know, that's that's going to be pretty majestic. We don't go there in this first cycle of games. Um, I don't think so. Yeah, we don't catch them. Obviously, you know, the new opponents coming in, been to Cincinnati, UCF. Um, you know, I haven't it, – it's a little different because I haven't been in these places – in their current state for one of our games. And so that really all of them, I mean, that I know that's a cop out answer, but genuinely I can't wait to travel this fall and uh, get the games. And obviously, you know, once basketball starts, you know, getting to Kansas and doing some of those things are really, really special. And, you know, having the privilege to do that in this role at represent our department is something I, I don't take lightly. Well, Chris, we're looking forward to having the Cougars in looking forward to uh, what's going to be a great athletics year and uh, really excited about where the Big 12 is going. And just so I know that we're going to have Houston fans watching this, they're going to look at the back of the wall. We've got it all lined up here. So we've got our Cougars gear. It will be on the wall for football season. And uh, we're excited, Chris. So thanks so much for joining us. Pete, I appreciate it. Thank you very much for having me on. Appreciate what you do for the Big 12 with the coverage of it. Anything I or we can do to help along the way, we're always available and can't wait to see you again.
You bet. That is uh, Chris Pesman, of course, the AD for the Houston Cougars, joining us on Heartland College Sports. I'm Pete Mundo. Before you head out, as always, on YouTube and the podcast, hit that subscribe button to our radio affiliates. Always appreciate you being a part of the show. Thanks so much.